get one more mic. I want you all to repeat that to me. Even if you've not heard someone else say this to you, I want you all to tell. I want you to tell yourself, I am beautiful. Please repeat that to me. It doesn't matter. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. Najma, who is a poetess and she's written a beautiful 
book and she's going to talk about it. So please put your hands together and welcome Najma. Hi everyone. Thank you for having me. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so Najma, can you introduce yourself to everyone here? Alright. Uh, my name is Najma. I published a book and I started writing the book at the age of 15 and I only published it around uh, two years, maybe three years back and it's available on Amazon, both Amazon and locally with me. It's available as an audiobook, an uh, ebook on Kindle and a uh, paperback. And the reason why I took uh, the route of using Amazon is because I wanted it to be international. Um, I graduated soon from college and uh, I'm working now, just going through life. Sadly, I don't write as I did before, but um, at least I can say that I published the book after having the people that care for me push me to do it. It's beautiful. Um, so did you tell them the name of the book? Oh yeah, the name of the book is uh, A Bouquet of Poetry. It is basically a collection of poems, and it doesn't touch a certain topic. Would you guys like me to also speak in Arabic? It's fine? Okay, good. So, the book is a collection of poems, and it's not necessarily things that are happening in daily life. It could be imagination as well. And the reason why I wrote this book, and I ended up publishing it, at first it felt personal, but then I thought that you know, if someone out there can relate to what I'm writing, why shouldn't I share it with other people? Because usually we go through things and we feel like I'm going through this alone, it's a tough time, and things like that. You know, we have these kind of thoughts. So the purpose of that was to read something and have it resonate with you. And as long as one person feels something, then I think I did what I needed to do. It's fabulous. Um... So what inspired you actually to write and does your book have any themes, something like that, that can motivate, um, that motivated you to compel, complete this collection or um, compile this collection? Yeah, I, I started writing at a very young age, so my dad used to travel a lot and I would actually write him letters, even though he wouldn't receive those letters, he would get them when they, he comes back home, but it just started there. And then during school, my English teachers were very, uh, they were very motivated. They were like, you should pursue something in journalism, but I didn't feel like that's my field, you know. And it started with writing short stories, and then it proceeded into writing poems, and after some of my friends pushed me and things like that, I was like, okay, maybe I should go to the poem groups. Uh, yeah, and there is no specific themes, really. It can be happy, it can be sad. Things like that. So you go with the flow? Yeah, I go with the flow. You can say that. You know, I've met a lot of authors, but this is the first time I'm meeting a poetess. And I'm so glad that I met you. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah? So are there any, um, how, how have you overcome challenges or obstacles in your career or personal life? And what lessons have you learned? from these experiences? Uh, well, since I use writing as an outlet, I felt that uh, it almost feels like I'm translating what's going inside me into paper, and that felt like it's a weight coming off my shoulder. I think that started from there, and I have this journal that I don't start it with Dear Diary. I just go in writing things that I would like to change, for example, about myself or the situation. And then through that process, I realized that if there is any obstacle, the first thing to do is that I need to accept that this is an obstacle and try running away from it. Or else it's just going to disrupt, you know, how I, pre how I perceive in life, basically. So I need to accept the obstacle, the obstacle, and then I need to see, is it something I can change? If it's something I can change, then I don't need to worry. If it's something I can't change, it's bigger than me, then God is going to handle it, you know? So I can say that... Uh, that's how I deal with the obstacles. And my advice to people you would read just take your obstacles as either lessons or blessings. It's either one of those things. You can always come out with a positive outlook, you know? It doesn't have to be that toxic positivity 
for you to force it, but at some point you're going to have to accept that I was supposed to learn something. And if I don't learn from this situation, then the universe is going to continuously send me this, um, this obstacle until I need to learn the lesson that I have to. That's lovely. You brought me there when you said that you journal. Because I journal a lot and that's helped me and mm -hmm. I guess there's, there's a lot of connection now. Yeah. Um, in your opinion, what are some of the biggest barriers or challenges facing women in general? And how can we overcome them? I think the biggest barrier can be the preconceived notions. Preconceived notions and ideologies that are being forced from everyone around us. It, you know, someone could say that the kind of life you're choosing is wrong. There's that, uh, you know, feminism right now is coming out and it's spreading in our country a lot. And I think people are taking it as a, as a way to, I think men, instead of, this is, you know, this is supposed to be helping women. And, um... This preconceived notion of, oh, feminism is this, feminism is that, women are this. If you're if you're a woman, you need to be strong and independent. You can't uh, you can't be a housewife. You can't be a working uh, woman. It's it's like at every single step there is something wrong. How you choose to present yourself, there is something wrong. And I think at some point you're just gonna have to let what others have to force on you let go. You know. From there onwards, then you can just ignore and then see what works for you. If it works for you being a uh, stay-at-home wife, then go ahead. If it works for you being a working woman, go ahead. If you want to choose the corporate life, if you want to choose looking after your business, everything works, you know. And I think we shouldn't always look at things as we have to be equal as much as we need to get what we deserve. Because equal doesn't always mean you're going to get what you deserve. That was mature talk, Najma, and um, I, I completely agree with you. Um, how can women support and empower each other and what steps can we take to create a more inclusive and supportive environment for women? I think just having a supportive community in general, um, like, because we have this I, I, I admit that this is something I used to do before, but after learning, reading, and um, you know, being around people, I learned that this was wrong. It's we have this thing where we're always like in a competition: who's better, who looks better, who has the who has the best items, who has the best clothes, who has the best job. I think the first thing is we need to stop looking at each other from this lens of I need to be better than that person, and I need to instead be. You know, on her side, I'm not saying be on someone's side even when everything is going wrong. It's just that in certain situations, you can say that us women are very dismissed. And we're very quick to dismiss each other. And I think that's the first thing we need to do is stop dismissing each other and actually take each other importantly. Because if we don't do that, then who's going to do that? You can't expect that from the other gender because they always back each other up. You know, and it's, it always feels like we're in this constant circle that we're supposed to be seeking acceptance from them. And that's not really good in the long run when you are down and you need the help of another woman. If anything, women relationships are very nurturing if you think about it, you know. We get to share, we get to talk, we get to be emotional with, you, with each other. Like, you can see the friendships around us, they feel very nurturing and loving. And I think if we can extend that to not only in our friend groups, that would be really great. It was very deep and profound. <laughs> yeah. And I just uh, prior to this, you were saying that you know, we should listen to ourselves. It's important that we listen to our hearts. And uh, thank you, Najma, for you know really uh, giving us a lot of insights, uh, especially being young. And you have so much for women to, yeah, to empower women. And I think that you know, many women in this world really need someone like you. Um, and before we leave, I would like to, because it's all about women empowering women, so I want to share something, three words, just give you three words before you go so that you remember this. Three words, are you ready? So just tell me, wave your hands and say I'm ready. Yes, yes. 